This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia. Friends, do not forget this. To be Catholic is the greatest gift in the universe, is to be Roman Catholic. Amen? And one day soon, the entire world will be converted to the Catholic faith. The entire world. Bishop Sheen himself said that through Our Lady of Fatima, the entire Muslim world will become Roman Catholic. Did you know that? Venerable Bishop Fulton J. Sheen, through the prayers of Mother Mary, the entire Muslim world will become Roman Catholic. Is that amazing? This is true. Now, he's not the first saint to say, he's the latest saint to say that. Many saints have said that, including St. Louis de Montfort, Blessed or Venerable Mary of Agreda. Many saints have prophesied this. And so you and I, or you might say in the advance guard, we are in the front, the front runners to bring about the conversion of the entire world. The instrument God has given to us is called the flame of love. And here's a copy of the diary. This is the abridged version of the diary, the one that most people have called the flame of love. And you can purchase that on the internet through the Queen of Peace media. It's very inexpensive. They sell it not to make money, just at expense. I think it's like $6. You may well want to get this book and to read it. It's unusually beautiful. It's a beautiful book, easy to read. Our Lord gave these locutions to a visionary in Hungary, in Budapest. And her name was Elizabeth Kindleman. That's the name of the visionary or the locutionist. He began to speak to her. She had a very difficult life. Elizabeth was married as a young woman to a young man in her church. They weren't rich. They were kind of poor, but they made it. I think he was a chimney sweep there in Budapest. They had six beautiful children. And then her young husband died, like in his 30s. So Elizabeth was left with six children and no husband in communist Hungary. Communist Hungary. That's why we have to pray for this beautiful country because we are in danger of becoming a communist country right now. That's what's happening. God will save us if we pray the flame of love. He will save this country. But when a country becomes communist, one of the first things they do is they shut down the churches. And they'll give you any reason why, like, for instance, COVID-19. They'll make any excuse in the world to stop you from worshiping God in Jesus Christ. Amen? I've worked with many people in communist countries. They say, Father, what's happening in this country is exactly what happened in our country. To be very, very careful. Only the Lord can rescue us now through his mother and the flame of love. He rescued Elizabeth. And what's important, I believe, what I see, looking at Elizabeth Kindleman's life, is the fact that when her husband died, she left with six children in communist Hungary, where they were completely anti-Catholic. And anyone who was faithful to the Catholic faith was persecuted. She had a statue, of course, of Mother Mary in her house. The communists discovered that. They fired her from her job. So now, six children, no husband, no job, no money, no food. She and her children were on the streets. You talk about a hard life. Sometimes we think we have it hard. Six children, no husband, no job, no money, no food, now on the street. It was a nightmare. And Elizabeth, I'm sharing this with you on purpose to give you some idea of how great God is. Elizabeth lost her faith. She lost her faith in God. 
And as Bishop Sheen himself has said, it's in the catechism as well, most people who are atheists, they're not really atheists for doctrinal reasons, for reasons of doctrine. Bishop Sheen said atheism is a cry for help. Most people who are atheists are suffering deeply and are crying out for help. She lost her faith. If we have a misunderstanding of the nature of the triune God, the Trinity, then you and I, and I've heard this so many times from fellow Catholics, God forbid from priests, having the attitude like this. You lost your faith? You're an atheist? You dirty no good for nothing. You're evil. You're going to hell. I hate you. Get out of here. I've seen this in Catholic families all over the country. Someone loses their faith and we condemn them and we hate them. And we make their atheism worse. There's only one proper response to atheism. Love and prayer. If someone's atheistic, you love them and you pray for them. You let them know through you that God still loves them. Amen? He loves them. You pray for them and you love them. So far from condemning her, Elizabeth losing her faith on the streets, you know, maybe we would have lost our faith too. Maybe. That's why the Bible says never judge another person. Never, never judge them. You love them and pray for them. If they do wrong, you tell them gently, not hatefully, gently. The Lord, far from condemning her, wooed her back to faith. He wooed her back. As a young man woos the girl he loves and dates her, and he whispers sweet nothings in her ear to win her back. Elizabeth began hearing a voice. There was a Carmelite brother in Budapest, who was a holy man, who died the year before. And Elizabeth was very close to this brother. A year after he died, and after Elizabeth lost her faith, she began hearing the voice of this brother in her ear. She was very close to him. He was a holy man. And he said, Elizabeth, Come back. Elizabeth, come back. Now notice he didn't scream at her or condemn her. This is the way of the Lord Jesus, is the way of love. It's strong, but it's kind. Come back. So after he, he kept inviting her back, the Lord, through the brother who had died, she finally went back to church, but she stayed in the back row and never came up front, way in the back. And everyone came up for communion, just stayed in the back. But at least she came back to church, you see? At least she was back. Then he began to tell her, come, come forward, come forward. So eventually she went to confession and started receiving Holy Communion. Then she began to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit inside of her. And every Catholic, including teenagers, should be able to hear the Holy Spirit. And he began to reveal to her the flame of love devotion for our time, the flame of love. In Spanish, llama de amor, llama de amor. Well, beloved, it's significant, I believe, that this new and approved devotion, perhaps the most powerful in church history, there's another one coming called the divine will that's even more powerful, that's for the time of peace, I find it significant this was given to you and I through an atheist. In other words, what the church is going through now and what this country is going through right now is kind of an anti-God spirit, an anti-God spirit, an atheistic agnostic spirit. Even those who are Catholic, they come to mass and you know that 80% of Catholics no longer believe in the real presence. We've lost our Catholic faith, you see. The Lord is going to save the world 
through a devotion, the flame of love that came to us through an atheist. Is that interesting? And so, beloved, the flame of love, if you pray it well, you'll find your faith becoming a fire inside of you. And priests should be on fire for Jesus, but so should you. We should be like one giant flame, you and I together. It should be so hot in here and so fiery that the fire department comes here every day to put out the fire. That's how it should be in the Catholic Church. So this gift of the flame of love, beloved, is meant to rekindle the flame of faith inside of you and I. It has those two main prayers. Is the unity prayer we just prayed. We're going to pray it again. I'm going to give you a copy. How many do you have, Deacon? You said you have a few extras? About 50? Why don't you pass them out now, respectfully, because the Lord is on the altar. And Deacon might need one or two helpers to help him. Maybe one for each family for now, since we have about 50 of them. This way, each family will have a copy of the prayer. We may have enough for each family represented here. Here's a young man to help you too, Deacon. I wonder, Deacon, could we have this printed in the bulletin for next Sunday, for next week? We'll see if we can get this printed in the bulletin so everyone can have it, maybe cut it out of the bulletin as well. We said this one already, and you want to know the promise of this amazing prayer. This has really almost never been heard before in the church. The promise is every time you say this prayer, I, the Lord, will come down and blind Satan. I will blind the devil, he says. And he said, if the devil is blinded, he can't see you. And if he can't see you, he cannot attack you. That's the promise of the Lord. I spoke to the bishop in charge of this devotion. His name is Cardinal Peter Erdo. He's the Archbishop of Hungary. He was the president of the European Bishops' Conference. He's a great man. He could well be a pope one day. Perhaps one of the greatest bishops in the world today. Cardinal Peter Erdo approved this prayer because it happened in his diocese, and that's the rule of the church. So the local bishop needs to approve it first, and he did. And he said to me that because of that promise, they waited. It's such a powerful and significant promise. They had to wait to make sure it was from God. How could a prayer blind Lucifer? Raise your holy hand if you still need a prayer. I think they might have one or two left. Anybody else needs one? The unity prayer. Very good. Thanks be to God. The Lord multiplied the prayer cards, I think. So we're going to try to say the prayer again. We want to blind him from your life for the rest of the day. We're being asked to say it every day. And I want to tell you, if you start saying this prayer beginning today, you will feel a difference in your life within a week. In other words, the demonic forces that may be attacking you, they will be blinded and paralyzed from attacking you. Everyone who uses prayer notices a difference in their life within days. Whatever evil may be attacking you. So we're going to say it again now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The unity prayer. Would you again, beloved, say this after me, but line by line? My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. And you see the second prayer, 
O blessed lady, spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity. That's the one we insert in the Hail Mary. Now about the first one, just to share this with you about the first prayer, the unity prayer, every family and every teenager should say it every day. At least once in the morning when you get up, more if you can, like morning, noon, and night is probably better. You'll find yourself protected no matter who's against you. The Bible says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Amen? I learned the power of this several years ago in my chapel in Georgia. When at the end of Holy Mass, during the week, I have a Catholic homeschooling community. And the little chapel is pretty well full for Mass, like 70 people. At the end of Holy Mass, a couple of years ago, I had been finished studying the book and reading about the prayers. They had been approved by, in the English edition, by Archbishop Chapu, who's a great bishop, by the way, just retired. I was reading about it in the promises. I was very intrigued as an exorcist, what it was saying. At the end of Mass, a woman from another country was visiting. She stood up at the end of Mass and began to scream. She put her hands up in the air, began to flail her hands wildly. She began to foam at the mouth like an animal with rabies, foaming at the mouth. She began to speak in a foreign tongue. It was not a regular language. It was not holy tongues. It was a demonic tongue. It would give you the heebie-jeebies to hear it, kind of creepy, you know. She was full-blown manifesting a demonic spirit right in front, screaming and flailing. Totally unexpected. When the demon comes into the presence of that which is holy, the demon cannot tolerate it. The demon cannot tolerate what is holy. It burns him, so to speak. He can't stand it. The demons are unholy and impure. So he began to scream and manifest in a terrific way, dramatic. I asked my team, I have like an exorcism team, to circle around her. And so my team circled around her. Everybody else was still in the pews. And I said, say this prayer after me. And I recited the unity prayer that you and I just said. I recited it line by line. And my team said it after me, line by line. I had just researched it. My father was a lawyer and a judge, but he was also a scientist. He was an architect. He designed airplanes and boats. He was an amazing man, my papa. But my dad taught me to be scientific, to think things through logically. So I thought, well, this prayer blinds and paralyzes the evil spirit. Let's give it a try. It was my thought, let's give it a try. Scientists experiment, you see? They experiment. So I said, team, say this after me. And we said it together, my adorable Jesus. And they answered, my adorable Jesus. May our feet journey together. May our feet journey together. As they said the prayer after me, this was witnessed by 75 people publicly. This was witnessed publicly. The poor lady who was demonized and screaming and foaming in front of us as we circled her, this is what we saw. Excuse me, Jesus. Screaming and shouting, foaming. Suddenly, as we said the prayer, her hands went like this, and an invisible force went like this, took her hands and pushed them together like this. Then she knelt down in front of me against her will. Then she bowed her head like a little lamb. She got real quiet, and she was asking me for my priestly blessing. I blessed her and she was set free. Now, beloved, I was trained in Rome as an exorcist in Rome. I've worked more than 40 years in the healing and deliverance ministry. I've never seen someone released from a devil in one minute ever. And no one else has either. And one minute set free from the evil spirit in front of 75 witnesses. So let me ask you now my one question for you today. Is God great or is God great? 
Let me ask you again. Is God great or is he great? Amen. So do you see what a great God we serve? The Lord Jesus Christ, blessed be his name. He can do anything and he will if you use the gifts he gave you. Amen. He's all powerful. And so here's my thought. If the, the Lord Jesus, through the flame of love prayer, gives me a complete exorcism in 60 seconds, what will he do for your family if you say it every day? Amen. Amen. And so, beloved, I won't go on much longer. I could talk for hours about the flame of love. In a particular way, it has a power against the demon spirits. As I met with Cardinal Peter Erdo in Hungary and Budapest, then I went to the headquarters that he established for the, for the whole world for the flame of love. I found out through our meetings that four other priests who were exorcists like myself had the exact same experience that I had. Simply by praying this prayer, people in front of them were re released from evil spirits completely in 60 seconds. We have never seen that ever, except maybe when Jesus himself did an exorcism, he would point boom and they'd be set free, you know? God has given the church a new power. And you want to realize, beloved, what we're fighting. You probably know this already. For instance, pornography. Is satanic. When I go to bless a home, I know when there's an evil spirit in the home, I say, someone's watching pornography in your house, aren't they? You can feel the pornographic spirit in the house. Pornography is satanic. It comes from hell. And Our Lady of Fatima said, more souls go to hell because of sins of the flesh than any other reason. Amen? For instance, marijuana, cocaine, and crack, there's a demon in the Bible called pharmacia or pharmacon, depending on the, on the translation. Pharmacia or pharmacon. What does that sound like? Yes, pharmacy. The same root word. There is a drug demon. I've seen him. I've seen him. I prayed over people who were dying of drug overdoses and they were healed and set free in front of me. There's a demon of drug abuse. For instance, the television especially the news, is constantly lying and exaggerating and blocking what is true and what is good. The Lord Jesus Christ said, Satan is the father of lies. Our news agencies are lying to you day and night. You realize that, don't you? They're constantly lying to us, constantly. That's satanic. That's satanic. Now, here's another example. This is not political. This is just a fact. I'm not Republican or Democrat. I'm independent. I voted in every election since I was 18. I voted in every single election as an independent. We have a man in the White House who calls himself Roman Catholic and will kill your children and smile. He's presided over for 47 years in government, the slaughter of more than 50 million babies in the womb. And he dares to call himself a devout Roman Catholic? If that's a devout Roman Catholic, I hate to see what a bad Roman Catholic is. Beloved, this is insane and it's, it's satanic to call yourself Roman Catholic and to kill unborn children. Do you get my drift? I don't care who it is, Republican or Democrat. Amen? We are living in a satanic age. A satanic age. And John Paul said before he died, we're in the greatest battle between light and darkness since the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Beloved, God knows this, and he's given us the means to victory. You've already received them today. There's no reason why anyone here should lose their soul. I want everyone here to go to heaven. Amen? Now, I'm going to claim to you right now. I have authority as a priest. Lord, I claim everyone in the church right now for heaven. I see demons over some of you, especially some of the younger ones. I bind the evil spirits over you. I bind them in the holy name of Jesus. Jesus, save everyone here. Fill them with the Holy Spirit, with the flame of love. Fill them.
Don't let them lose their souls. Save everyone here. Make them holy, Jesus. Make them holy. Let them have a great love for you as Mary loved you and give their lives purpose and meaning. Amen. One Hail Mary that nobody here will lose their soul. Okay? We're going to pray for each other right now. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Now, beloved, the flame of love can save you and protect you and your family from all that is evil. The unity prayer, try to say it morning, at least. I would recommend morning, noon, and night, because some very difficult times are coming this year. This will keep you and your family safe. Amen? Secondly, consider saying the smaller prayer within your rosary. Say that within your, that brings about the victory, spread the effect of grace, of thy flame of love over all humanity. That's going to defeat the evil on a worldwide level. Mama says, please, it's all approved by the church, what I'm sharing with you, with an imprimatur. It would defeat the evil on a worldwide level, including communism and Freemasonry. It's going to, all of that's going to be defeated soon. But Our Lady says she needs you. Even our young people, she needs your prayers. Amen? As a closing word, I'm going to invite you to receive the flame of love. Our Lady said to the visionary, Elizabeth Kendallman, now isn't it funny that's her name? Kendallman? That's her name. What does the flame of love do? It kindles in man the fire of God. That's her name. She was born with that name. How in the world did that happen? Let me ask you one question. Is God great or is God great? Amen. How did that Name, kindle man, kindle within man the flame of my love. Amen? Hallelujah. So, beloved, here's a special little prayer. It's called passing the flame of love for it to burn inside of you. Mary said, Jesus is the flame of love. We want a fire inside of each of us. If you are bored, you are not living the Catholic faith. Jesus, the devil is the prince of boredom. Those who follow Christ have a life full of adventure and joy, full of adventure and joy. And so we want to put the flame of love inside of each of our hearts. That's Jesus himself, like Pentecost. It's the Lord himself inside of you. When he lives inside of you, he'll begin guiding you day by day. Hallelujah. Here's one little example that happened to me a month ago. Every day I see something remarkable. This happened just a month ago. I travel from city to city, from country to country. I was preaching in California a month ago. And on my way, I had to, I finished the retreat that I was giving. And a friend was driving me to the airport in Oakland, California. So I could fly to Missouri and preach in Missouri. On my way to the airport, I asked my driver, I said, is there a Catholic church on the way so I could stop and go to confession real quick? It's always good to go to confession before you fly. That way, if the plane goes down, you go up. It's an old tradition, you see? And so I said, well, I'm going to catch a plane. I try to go once a week. And we found a priest on the way to the airport in Oakland. We stopped by. He was so beautiful. He waited for me. Zip, popped in two or three minutes. He was a marvelous priest. He was a big, fat Hispanic priest. Cute as could be. He looked like Santa Claus. And he, when he went to pray over me, he began to sing. What a beautiful priest. He would sing over you when he prays over you. So sweet. And he said, Father, this is your penance. I said, yes, Father. He says, Father Jim, God has given you the gift of healing. You need to go out and heal the nations. You are to heal his people. My name is Jim or James, James Edward. So it was like he was saying to me, Father James Edward, 
Go out and heal. That's your penance. I said, thank you, Father. Oh, that was a nice penance. I thought you might tell me to eat broccoli. You know what I mean? That's a tough penance for me. No, God and heal. That's fun. I love to heal God's people. Okay, Father. So Father James Edward, go out and heal. I said, thank you. He gave me his blessing. I went to the airport, jumped on the plane, flew to Missouri. I did a conference over the weekend, the Shrine of the Miraculous Medal. They brought me back to the airport in St. Louis on Sunday night. I flew back to California to preach another retreat in another city in California. On the way back, I got on the airplane. I was the last one on the airplane. There were no seats were left. I said, God, find me a good seat so I can just pray. There was one, one seat left by the window. This particular airline's it's called Southwest Airlines. There's no assigned seating. You just go in like a herd cattle and find your seat. I was the last one on the airplane because I have cheap seats, inexpensive seats. I have a vow of poverty. And so I, one window seat, I said, can I sit there? And the old lady stood and said, yes, you can sit here. So she and her husband moved out and I moved in and sat next to the window. I couldn't believe there was a good seat left for me. I said, it always happens when I pray my rosary. Or my blood of Jesus, it always happens. It happened to me yesterday on the airplane. The plane was full. I sat down on the airplane. I always pray for that like, quiet. The plane's full. I'm in my seat. The steward comes up and tells the man sitting next to me in the middle, sir, there's an empty seat over here. So he got up and moved out all the space in the world. The only one with an empty seat next to him. Isn't God great? Let me ask you this. Is God great or is he great? You don't know how great he is. Amen? God is not great. He's greatness itself. He's not simply great. God is greatness. Amen? So on this plane back to Oakland, the best seat in the house, I couldn't believe it, a window seat. I'm praying. There's a beautiful old couple sitting next to me. They're beautiful. And they like sitting next to a priest. Some people hate priests, but others love them. So they love me. I did my prayers, I said hello to them, did more prayers, talked for a minute, did more prayers, talked to them, four hour flight. Finally landed in Oakland. As we're landing, I said to the old lady, what's your husband's name? Now remember what father told me. He said to me, Father James Edward, go out and heal. I went to Missouri, did a healing service and many other things, many miracles happened, flew back. As the plane is landing, I say to the old lady, what is your husband's name? So, oh, his name is Jim. Oh, but not really, sir. His name is James Edward. So, James Edward? What's his last name? She said to me, my husband's name is James Edward Heal. His name is James Edward Heal. And I was told by the priest, Father James Edward, go out and heal. Amen. Now I have one question for you. Is God great or is God great? How did that happen? Somebody tell me. How did that happen? Because God is great. Amen. And it's not just me, even teenagers who pray the rosary and the blood of Jesus and the prayer, even teenagers a little tiny prayer to pass the flame from the Eucharist into your heart. We want flame that's there in our hearts too. Amen? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, this is a beautiful little meditation prayer. It begins with three questions. So brothers and sisters, let me ask you now. Do you renounce Satan? And all of his works, all of his seductions. Brothers and sisters, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Do you believe that he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit? Do you believe that he was born of the Virgin Mary? Brothers and sisters, do you want to receive the flame of love of Jesus Christ? Do you want the flame of love that's also in the immaculate heart of Mary beating within your heart? 
Now, brothers and sisters, with your eyes closed, would you open the door of your heart right now before the Lord in the Eucharist? There's little doors on your soul. Open the doors of your soul right now before the Eucharist and allow the flame of love to pass from my heart and from the Eucharist through the air into your heart. Open your heart's doors and allow the flame to pass from the altar into you. Invite Jesus to be the very center of your life. Not a Jesus, a living Jesus, a flame of love. See the flame come into you and set you on fire in your heart, a good fire. It doesn't burn you. It doesn't burn you. It's like the flame that Moses saw in the desert on the bush. The bush did not burn, but the flame was there. Now the Virgin Mary is standing behind you and she's embracing you now. She's kissing you on the cheek. The Virgin is next to you now. And she wants to give you the flame of love without limits. Limits, no boundaries, full, complete. Receive the flame from Jesus and from Mary for your heart and for your beautiful family. Receive it from Jesus and Mary for yourself and your family. Now, I feel it's been, it's happened, it's been done. We're going to say Hail Mary with the inserted prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity. And now we'll sit in silence for a couple of minutes. You will feel the effect of it over time. Some of us feel it immediately. Over time, it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger or as the weeks go by. Sit quietly now with that flame. I see everyone's been touched. I can see it in the spirit. Sit with it quietly for a few minutes. Then we're gonna pray the Chaplet of Mercy together in just a moment. <laughs> 